Today we are going to take a look at getting started with Telerix RAD Panorama, part of Telerix RAD controls for Windows Forms Control Suite. RAD Panorama is a control that displays elements of type RAD tile element in a mosaic manner. This control is inspired by the Metro Start Menu screen of Windows 8. Main features of the control are grouped and ungrouped view, drag and drop reorder, multi-touch functionality, extendable tile elements, and live tiles. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to use the RAD Panorama inside of Visual Studio 2010. So before we get started today, I wanted to show you the Demos Apps Hub. The source code to the Demos Apps Hub is available when you download the Q3 2011 WinForm release, so you can explore it in detail after this video. But the key thing to note here is that you have several groups contained in the RAD Panorama Control. And each group has several tiles in it. From the application tile, you can see we have two live tiles, including Movie Lab and Photo Album. The other thing to note is that drag and drop reordering is supported. It is also touch supported so you could control the application with a finger instead of a mouse. Let's go ahead and dive back into Visual Studio and create this sample. So back into Visual Studio, I'm going to go File, New, Project. I'm going to select Windows, RAD Controls, Windows Forms Application, and I'm going to give it a name and go ahead and hit OK. We're just going to select Telerik.Win Controls and hit Finish from there. Once that's complete, our project is going to spin up. Once our project spins up, I'm actually going to add in a Telerik RAD form because that form looks a lot better with this application. So I'm going to hit Telerik RAD form. We see we have RAD form 1. That's OK. We'll just go ahead and hit Add here. And once that's complete, we can see we have our RAD form added to our project. First thing, I would like to go into our program and I'm just going to go ahead and change this to RAD form 1 inside of program.cs. That way it points to our RAD form instead of the default Windows form. Now if we expand this out just a little bit, we can see RAD control for WinForms Containers 2011 Q3. And inside of that, it's going to contain our RAD panorama. So I'm just going to drag and drop that onto the form here. So now that we have our RAD panorama on the screen here, I'm going to use the smart tags and I'm going to add in two groups. I'm going to go edit groups, I'm going to go add and add. And the first one, I'm going to give this guy a name of applications. And I'm just going to scroll down here. And under text, I'm going to give this the name Applications. Then I'm going to scroll back up. And I'm going to give this a name of Applications Group. Once that's complete, I'm going to make one more change here to my cell size. And I'm just going to change that to 150, 150. So I'm ready to go to my second group here. And in my second group, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and change the cell size to 150, 150. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to give this guy a name as Tools Group. And finally, we'll set a little bit of text here that just says Tools Group. Now that we have both of our groups in place, we can go ahead and hit OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select over here under Properties and select Application Group. And I'm going to go to Items. And inside of Items, we have a collection. One thing to note inside of the collection, you'll see we can add a RAD tile element or a RAD live tile element. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of each where you can see the differences between them. So we'll add one red live tile element, we'll add a tile element, a tile element, two more tile elements, and we'll finish up with a live tile element. Now once that's in place, uh, we're going to need to set a couple of properties for these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give all of these a name very quickly. 
Okay, and for the sake of the demo, uh, I've given each one of these items a name. Now I'm going to set the text property very quickly. Okay, and now the text for each one of these items has been set accordingly. So now a couple of things that we need to look at here is for the movie lab, we have a couple of different properties that will be of interest. So the first is text alignment. So I can click here and I can actually position it where I want this text to appear. And in this example, I want it to be in the top left. We can also change the text image relation and then the text orientation. So if I come back, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add an image to this project. And I'm just going to select movie and hit OK. For the next couple of items, I'm also going to set an image on these as well. Now that that's in place, I may want to change the way that the text is going to appear on the bug tracker. So I can select bug tracker tile and I can come back to my text, text alignment. It's going to be text image relation is going to be image above text, text alignment. We will just put this in the top center and the same will go for the rest of these. And the last thing that we're going to need to do here is we're going to actually need to set our row span and column span properties. So the row span property specifies how many cells of a row should be occupied by the tile. The column span property specifies the number of cells in each column which the tile should occupy. There's also a cell padding property that specifies the offset of the tile according to the bound of the cells. So in this sample, I've already went ahead and I've set the row span and the column span of each of the elements. So now let's just go ahead and hit OK and click on our rad panorama control and make sure there's a check in show groups. And let's go ahead and add in a little bit more functionality. So I'm going to switch back over to the tools group and I'm actually going to add in a couple of more items here just to make this application look a little bit more fuller than what it already is. So I'm going to select my tools group and I'm going to go back to items. And once I get to items, I'm going to select the collection. Once that's complete, I hit OK. And if I run my application again, I can see that our tools group exists. And I'm just going to slide back over to our applications. Now what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to make the Telerik Movie Lab into a live tile, as well as show our pictures that are missing here. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'll close out of this. I'm going to select my application and we'll just do view code. Now that we did view code, I have a code snippet prepared that's going to help us get this accomplished a little bit quicker. So now I'm going to paste in a method that I have created. And this method is called load movie lab tile content. And we'll go ahead and fix a couple of these using statements. And from here, after our initialize component, I'm going to just simply call this method. Let's take a quick look at one of these though. So we have a movielab.title.content change interval set to five seconds. We have a transition type, slide left. And then we have a movielab.title.atoms.new equals new light visual element. As you can see, the text here is movie idea, Pirates of the Caribbean. And as you see, the BR is your typical HTML text, which is allowed. We have an alignment, padding, a font. So we've added in a couple of items here. So now if we run this application and we give it just a few seconds, we'll be able to see that text slide in. So our first text, movie idea inception, movie idea the expendables. Now let's just see what it would take to actually get this photos working over here. So let's close back out of this application. And now back at our C-sharp page, 
we're going to add in another method here. This time, this method is called load photo album tile content. And of course, we're going to add in our load photo album content. And we'll take a look at one of these as well. So we're setting the text to nothing, the change interval 7000. The transition type is going to be slide up. And then we're adding a couple of new image primitives. So we have a couple of images added here into our resources. And we're just going to call them image one, image layout zoom, should handle mouse input faults, notify parent on mouse input true. And so we add in just a couple of these. Then down here at the bottom, we have our photo album.children.add, where we're actually setting the text photo album. And of course, the alignments, Z index, paddings, and more. So let's go ahead and run this application. And now we rerun this application. You can see we have photo album down here at the bottom. We have an image, and now we just had a, another image slide up. So let's add a event handler to one of these just to show you what it's like to interact with the application. We'll close this. We'll go back to rad form. We'll click on our file explorer and then go to our events. Double click on click and just like any button you'd be able to add in code here. And in this sample we'll just simply add in a system.diagnosis.process.start on Explorer. So now if we click File Explorer, we'll see Windows Explorer opened up. I want to thank you for watching Getting Started with Rad Panorama. Be sure to check out tv.telerik.com for more videos and check out blogs.telerik.com for the latest news and enhancements. Feel free to give it a try now by downloading the demo at Telerik.com.